Okay, so in this upcoming lab, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the decomposition of potassium chlorate. So if we have potassium chlorate, we're going to see that it can decompose into three possible products. Potassium chlorite, potassium hypochlorite, and potassium chloride. Okay, so our goal this week is to figure out, well, which one does it actually decompose into? Does it give us potassium chlorate, uh, uh, chloride, potassium hypochlorite, or potassium chloride? Well, in order for us to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take a sample in here of our potassium chlorate, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a flame here with our Bunsen burner. And what we're going to do is we are going to look at this uh, flame coming up and heating up our potassium chlorate. Well, when that happens, you'll notice that when our potassium uh, chlorate goes to either potassium chloride, potassium hypochlorite, or potassium chloride, it is going to release, right, it's getting rid of oxygen, it's going to release O2. Well, as our reaction happens and we give off O2, we know that O2 is a gas. Well, that gas is going to go through our tubing here, well, and it's going to fill up this container in here. Well, this is open on both sides. So what that's going to do is that's going to push our water level down. Okay, so as it pushes the water level down, that's going to cause our water to come out and begin to fill up our flask. Okay, so now what we can do is we're, we're going to be able to figure out, well, the volume of water that comes in here is equal to the volume of water that's displaced by our gas. Well, why is it displaced? We've produced oxygen. So we're able to see that the volume of water that we measured is going to be equal to the volume of oxygen. Okay, and that's the volume of oxygen produced, and this is the volume of water displaced. So we've displaced some water, we see our water level has moved down, and our water level has moved down because we've gone ahead and had some of that come through. Well, that's from the formation of our oxygen. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, our goal is to look at the stoichiometry of this reaction. What we want to figure out is how much O2 is formed. Once we know how much O2 is formed, that's going to tell us whether it's decomposed to give us potassium chloride, hypochlorite, or potassium chloride. Well, if we know the volume, okay, and we're thinking about trying to figure out the amount of oxygen that's produced, we would know that if we want to relate this, we're going to use the ideal gas law. Okay, well now we already know the volume. Our goal is to figure out how many moles of oxygen is formed. So we got to know our pressure here, right? And we need to know our temperature. Well, the temperature is a little bit more straightforward, right? We just take a thermometer and we measure the temperature of the water and then that we can think, well, that must be the temperature of uh, the oxygen above it, okay? The tricky one here is thinking about this is the pressure, but we want just the pressure of the O2. And we know in here, we're adding in O2, but we also have water vapor, right? It's, it's sitting above, above the water. There's always a vapor that's given off by a liquid. And so we're gonna see that the pressure inside of there contains the amount of, so contains oxygen and the water vapor. So in order for us to figure out how much and we just have, excuse me, oxygen that we have, we need to take into consideration the fact that there's some pressure contributed to our water vapor. We're going to do something that seems kind of weird, right? We're going to move, we're going to see as we do this, we're going to move our beaker up and down, and we're going to move our beaker up until the water level is equal. So we'll take this and we'll move it up. What that does is that tells us the pressure pushing down on this water out here is equal to the pressure pushing down on this water here. And so what we can say is that the pressure atmospherically is equal to the pressure inside of there. So now we know the first piece, right? We know that our atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to what's sitting out here. Well, inside of here, right, we said there's oxygen and there's water vapor. So that means that we're going to have some amount of water vapor pressure and some amount of oxygen pressure, or this piece, uh, Pressure with a subscript means the partial pressure of oxygen, of oxygen and water here. Well, we just found out the total pressure because we know it's equal to each other. 
what we're going to do is we're going to look at, well, we need to know the pressure of water, okay? Well, that vapor pressure of water is temperature dependent. So if we know the temperature of our water here, that would tell us what our vapor pressure is. Well, then once we know our vapor pressure, we can go ahead and solve for our partial pressure of O2. So now we know the piece of our, our, our pressure of oxygen, the volume of oxygen, the temperature of oxygen, and dealing with the ideal gas law, that's the ideal gas constant. So the only unknown variable that we have is the moles of gas. We're going to find that, and then we can go ahead and say, compare that to what we originally started with, and we'll answer the question, did we form potassium chloride, potassium hypochlorite, or potassium chloride? So we see in lab this week, that's our goal. Our overarching goal is to figure out what is formed in this reaction, right? Which one of these is actually being formed? To do that, we're going to decompose this potassium chloride, look at the amount of oxygen that is formed by the displacement or movement of our water, and then that's gonna get us down the path of figuring out at the end how many moles of oxygen we have, and we're gonna compare that to the starting mass which we could get to the number of moles, right? The starting number of moles of our potassium chlorate. So I hope you're looking forward to this lab. We're gonna use some Bunsen burners. We're gonna set up a very interesting apparatus. It's gonna get us to have the ability to measure the volume of a gas produced in this uh, decomposition reaction of our potassium chlorate.